Today on Beers TV, we're going to talk rock surface area and porosity. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to talk about surface area and rock. We're also going to share some interesting test results based on this as well. Reefers commonly reference surface area and porosity when selecting a rock type, but what does that even mean and why are they concerned about it in the first place? For the most part, reefers are concerned about porosity because they want to provide adequate surface area for beneficial bacteria to populate and quickly and efficiently process ammonia created from the breakdown of foods and fish waste into nitrite and then into nitrate. Most reefers are also concerned about a rock's internal pore network, which is theorized to populate anaerobic bacteria, which completes the final step of the nitrogen cycle where nitrate is converted into nitrogen gas and bubbles out of the tank permanently. When reefers refer to porosity, they're generally talking about two things. How many visible holes are in the rock itself, as well as the density or availability of the microscopic internal pore network itself, which are completely different things. To compound the complexity of the conversation, reefers often also refer to the surface area as well, which is yet another entirely different thing. In today's demo, we're going to talk about all three, visual porosity, availability of the internal pore network, and actual surface area of our four most popular rocks, Bukani, Reef Saver, Fiji, Tonga Branch, as well as a sample of the Marine Pier ceramic biofiltration media. The first thing we're going to hit on is visual porosity. Of the available samples, it's obvious that Marine Pier has the largest visible pore network. After that, it's pretty much a tie between Pukani and Reef Saver as they both have a pretty intricate network of visual holes. Fiji doesn't have a whole network, but it does have a regular surface versus a fairly smooth surface on the Tonga. So if you were going to select a type of rock purely based on visual porosity, it would absolutely be the Pukani or Reef Saver. The second element to discuss is the actual surface area. Surface area is one of those things you can't see with the naked eye. The most common example of this is with activated carbon. Activated carbon has a microscopic but vast internal pore network where a single tablespoon of carbon has as much surface area as an entire football field. So we talk surface area today, we're talking about the actual exposed surface area of the rock at a molecular level. To find this out, we sent out 100 gram samples of each rock to a lab which performed multi-point BET surface area testing where they test the absorption of nitrogen at various pressures on crushed samples of each rock. We asked our Facebook community which type of rock they thought was going to have the most surface area, and it was overwhelmingly Pukani and Marine Pier, which matched the BRS staff's opinion as well. The results are reported in square meters per gram of sample. I think most of you will find the results pretty surprising. The sample with the highest volume of exposed surface area was the Fiji rock at 1.14 square meters of surface area per gram. Second was the Marine Pier Biomedia at 1.06 square meters per gram. The Reef Saver and Pukani were virtually tied at 0.515 and 0.512, about half the exposed surface area of the Fiji or Marine Pier. Not surprisingly, the Tonga came in at a dismal 0.10 square meters per gram, which is less than a tenth of the Fiji or Marine Pier. So based on this alone, if you were looking for a rock with the most surface area, Fiji seems like the best option. The one thing this doesn't really represent accurately is the true availability of the internal pore network of a larger sample like a two pound rock. Reefers are constantly debating how much of the rock's internal pore network is really available within the rock. To test this out, we took a one kilo or 2.2 pound samples of each rock and soaked them in water overnight and reweighed them in the morning. The thought here is the extra weight will all be water absorbed by the rock's internal pore network and a fairly decent measurement of the availability of this pore network. While I can't say this definitively, it might also give us an idea of the rock's ability to process water deep within its pore network, where the anaerobic bacteria processes nitrate into nitrogen gas, something most of us desire greatly. In order from greatest to least, the Marine Pier more than tripled its weight and held 2,400 grams of water, Pukani had 380 grams of water, the Fiji absorbed 210 grams, Tonga 90, and the Reef Saver just 60. So while the Pukani and Reef Saver have almost the exact same exposed surface area on a crush sample, a one kilo rock was able to absorb over six times the volume of water, which is an indication that the internal pore network and density creates a much larger overall available surface area deep within the rock's internal pore network. This makes sense because Reef Saver is more or less fossilized coral and pretty dense. 
And while the crushed sample of the Fiji had twice the exposed surface area, the sample rock was only able to absorb just over half as much water, so it isn't as big of a win as it looked initially. Couple of things on the Marine Pier. It wasn't surprising that the Marine Pier sample did well in all three fronts. Visually, it's obvious the material's very porous. The surface area testing we did came in just below their published numbers, and it's not surprising they can hold 20 times plus the water of the other samples because you can literally run water straight through a block over four inches thick. However, it's 10 times as expensive as well. I do think it's a great option when you want to add an immense amount of surface area and don't have much room to work with. A negative space aquascape would be a good example where you could use a marine pier block in the sump to compensate. Marine Pier also makes these nice spheres which can be added to pretty much any area of the sump or filter and a huge upgrade to plastic bio balls because they not only have 20 times the surface area but they also stay wet during a power outage and keep the beneficial bacteria alive. If you have any questions or comments about the testing we did here today, check out the comments area down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release two new reefing videos every single week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.